Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, today is Tuesday, March 23rd, and we are on day seven of the Bible reading plan, Encounters with Christ. And believe it or not, today's reading focuses in on the adulterous woman, right, who we have talked about for the past two Sundays. And so uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, you are very familiar with this uh, particular instance in scripture. All right. And so uh, with that said, we're just going to jump right into it this morning. Uh, we are going to be reading uh, John chapter 7 verses 53. And then we're going to make our way into John chapter 8 verse 11 because it is are connected together. And uh, verse 53 says this, they went to each, uh, they went to each his own house. And then chapter 8 verse 1 says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, right, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? Now this they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to look, as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, "Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her." And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Right, amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, without without sounding like a broken record, right? Because we've we've been here before, right? This passage, right, is actually not found in the earliest manuscripts, the original manuscripts, when it comes to the Gospel of John. So that's why when you look at your Bible, you would notice it's in uh, these brackets, and maybe if your Bible is fancy enough, it'll say not in the earliest manuscripts. And so you might be asking, like, why why do we still look at this particular? instance if it's not consistent with the earlier copies of the gospel of john right and even if that might be the case at the same time right there is nothing in it that is un, uh, that is unworthy of sound doctrine we can still actually learn a, a quite well actually we, we can learn a great deal right from looking at this particular scripture because if anything it further affirms the grace that exists with Jesus, and it further iterates uh, Jesus' goal and ministry to not condemn, but really to save the lost. Right? And we see it all throughout Jesus' ministry, Jesus meeting with those who are sinners, Jesus associating himself with those who are considered sinners or should be outcasts. We see Jesus, uh, in a sense, lowering himself to be with these people. And so this kind of encounter, even though it may not be consistent, we don't look past it because we're like, this seems like something that Jesus would do and we can always learn something from it. And, you know, we see that with this adulterous woman, right? You have the Pharisees and scribes who bring this woman caught in the act of adultery in hopes of either stoning her or luring Jesus into something that would allow for them to bring charges against Jesus, right? Whatever the case, they are seeking judgment and they want to satisfy justice using their own methods <clears throat> excuse me but jesus by his grace and mercy gives them a rude awakening and when he says in verse 7 let him who is without uh let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her right kind of changes things up right it catches everyone off guard because being that everyone is guilty of sin Right, Jesus is speaking to them like none of them can say, "Well, I'm sinless. Let me be the first one to throw the stone." 
No, in fact, right, we are all guilty of sin. And as a result, one by one they leave until no one is left to condemn her. And so looking at this encounter with Jesus, what can we learn from how these events transpired and how Jesus reacted, how Jesus handled the situation? And how can we identify with just the things that are going on? And more importantly, what does it teach us about Jesus? You know, one thing I believe that we can learn from this particular uh, piece of scripture is that even though Jesus, right, Jesus, the, the Son of God, right, who came down from heaven, even though he could have so easily condemned us, right, he could have judged us, right, he could have brought us before the Father to be judged, <coughs> but that's not what Jesus is about, right? If we look at the life of, of Christ, Jesus didn't come to bring judgment upon us. He actually came to save us from that judgment he knows awaits us. And, you know, Jesus came, right, not to accomplish judgment, but he came to save, right? We see Jesus came to seek the lost, right? Jesus came to seek what we might consider to be the worst of the worst. But he also came to save those who, you know, he came to save those who, who might think that there is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Especially if we were to compare ourselves to the next guy. Because me, compared to the next guy, that dude is completely worse, right? He is the batter of the two. And I know batter is not the right word, right? You see, like, we might we might compare ourselves. And I compare to them, right? We might be considered saints. But that defeats the purpose of... Of why God sent his one and only son. Right? And vice versa. Someone might even consider you. <laughs> to be the worst of the two. Right? I'm pretty sure there are a ton of people. Who think that they are. The better. Compared to me. And they might be true. right? But the point is. Jesus came not to bring condemnation. But he came to save us. From that very judgment. That he knows that his father is very well. Ready to. And prepared to carry out. The second thing that we can learn from this is that sometimes the people who judge us more harshly sometimes are those who we consider to be examples of the faith, right? I, I would imagine that the people during this time, or even this adulterous woman, she might have thought that well, maybe the Pharisees are, are, are here because you know the, the the holier the holier people they know the law well. Maybe they're going to help me. Maybe they correct me. But that wasn't the case, right? A lot of times, the people we look up to might be all might be the people who end up disappointing us, you know. But at the same time, we have to be careful with our our actions and how we deal with the sin that exists in other people's lives, right? And in this given scenario, the Pharisees, I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't mean them all, right? If we're honest with ourselves, they they came with evil intentions, right? Verse six tells us that we uh, that and we might not be like the Pharisees. But we are also prone to be judgmental, right? When we should be showing compassion and grace. Why? Well, quite frankly, because we too are sinners saved by grace. You know, a, a lot of times we, we, we think we, we might even get offended by the way that people might judge us. Or we think that they're judging us, but they're trying to love us. It's a complicated situation. But for us as people of, of God, right? As followers of Christ... As people who are, have encountered uh, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we sh need to care enough to identify sin, but at the same time, we have to show enough grace to the point where it does, it's not coming off as if we are bringing judgment and condemnation upon the people around us. If anything, we are to love them. Why? Because we are we too are sinners saved by the same grace that's been extended to those people. Lastly, uh, this encounter with Jesus would change the course of this adulterous woman's life. In judgment, she was brought before Jesus, right? The Pharisees seeking condemnation was the reason they brought her before Jesus. But after, after meeting Jesus, meeting and encountering Jesus, she wasn't met with condemnation or judgment. She was met with mercy and compassion. And because of that, she was given a new meaning to, to life, right? A meaning that meant 
to go and sin no more. And so this morning I ask you the question, right? or today, uh, as you are reminded that we are all sinners saved by grace, we ask ourselves a question. Have I been too harsh with somebody? If so, show them grace. Right? Maybe we need to ask ourselves a question. Who can I show a little bit more grace toward? Or who can I show mercy to? And last but not least, right? remember what it, what it was like to be met with Jesus' grace, love, and compassion when we deserved far more worse things like his judgment. But thanks be to God that Jesus came not to condemn, but he came to save. And so thinking about this adulterous, adulterous woman's encounter with Jesus, today would you go about thinking and reflecting upon how it speaks to you and your situation and how you can take her encounter with Jesus and apply that to your life as you are leaving and sinning no more. Church, I pray that you would have a blessed Tuesday. I pray that God would lead you and guide you all throughout today as you are looking to Him and as you are in tune with Him as He speaks to you. Until next time, may you go in peace. Amen and amen.